You don't have to teach them about the cosmological argument or the teleological. They can, they can ignore that. What they can't ignore is something they deal with every day, and that is right and wrong. Don't get me wrong, I love teaching about those other arguments, but this is the most personally relevant way to get right to the point. This is why Ravi Zacharias calls himself a moral law apologist. He's dealing all the time with the moral law. So you can show there's a standard of rightness out there by talking about right and wrong. No matter what the person thinks is right or wrong, there can't be a standard, an objective standard, unless God exists. By the way, this is also the way you can show them how relevant Christianity is. In fact, why did Jesus come is a question we need to ask ourselves when we're trying to figure out what Christianity is all about. You know, Jesus actually told us why he came. He said, for even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. You go, what's this ransom business? I don't need a ransom to pay, have somebody to pay God off for me. Nobody needs to pay God a ransom to get me off the hook. I'm a pretty good person. I can make it to God on my own. You know why we think that? Because we have a relative moral standard in our mind, from the moral giant Mother Teresa down to the moral midget Hitler. And next to Hitler, we put criminals. We know they're not quite as bad as Hitler, but they're bad. And then next to criminals, we put all the immoral people we all know. You know our immoral friends and relatives? who aren't quite as good as we are because our picture's right here next to Mother Teresa. <laughs> and then if we believe in heaven and hell at all, we arbitrarily draw a line in the sand and we say, these are the bad people, they're going to hell, and we're the good people, we're going to heaven. That's what we think. But that's not the way the moral universe really works. The line doesn't run up and down. We shouldn't be comparing ourselves to one another. Paul even says that in 2 Corinthians 10. It's unwise for you to do that. I'm sure you could be better than your neighbor, but you're still a sinner, not a mistaker. Well, you're that too. No, the line doesn't run up and down. The line actually runs across the top, and all of us have fallen short of that line. From Mother Teresa down to Hitler. And what Christ has come and done is he's lived a perfect life in our place. And by trusting in him, we can not only be forgiven, we can be given his righteousness. Think about that. Think about how amazing that is. You're not just forgiven, you're given his righteousness. So the purpose of his life was to be punished in your place. And all you need to do to have your bad things forgiven, if you don't want to use the word sin, everyone agrees they've done bad things, all you need to do is trust in what Christ has done. Now that's pretty good news, don't you think? It's great news. But some people don't want it because they still want to continue to do bad things. And that's going to get in the way. But morality, I think, is the easiest way to show that God exists and that Christianity is the only solution to the problem. In fact, think about this. If you ask anybody, I don't care what their worldview is, if you ask anybody this question, what's wrong with the world, nobody's going to say nothing. Right? Everybody's going to realize we've got problems. Well, what's the ultimate solution? Not looking inside ourselves. The compass doesn't point to us. There's something outside of us. And that something is God's nature.